All right, so this is our helmsman station right here. And the purpose of the helmsman is to make sure we're on course and going the speed that the captain or perhaps navigator, if it's delegated, commands. We have two engine order telegraphs, one for the port engine, one for the starboard engine. Port is on the left side, starboard is on the right side. The inside is labeled ahead and the outside is labeled astern, inside relative to the other engine order telegraph. So basically, you're not directly controlling the engines, you're sending a message to the engineer, the engine room, which is not modeled in the game, for the engineers to do what is supposed to be done. Uh, because it's pretty complex, I guess. There's two engines, there's a diesel engine and electric engine. Diesels work when we're surfaced and electrics work when we're well, surfaced or submerged. If we dive below um, probably about seven to eight meters, our diesel engines flood. So it's a good idea to switch to en electric engines. As we're diving, If the I, f I tested and the diesel engines, if they flood, it'll take longer to switch to electric engines, probably because the engineers got to curse and uh, fix the flooding. So uh, the helmsman has to be on point as far as switching to electrics as appropriate. And this should be kind of part of the procedure, not, not necessarily directly commanded. But if we're diving and we are starting to go down, probably should switch to electrics. Otherwise, helmsman is going to get uh, meet at the captain's mast. <laughs> Okay. Also on the dive, what we were doing the other day is the helmsman opens the uh, forward uh, flood valves. Yeah, exactly. Right. So there are a couple other procedures where the helmsman may leave the station, for example, opening the forward ballast tanks or a couple other things as necessary. But the main job is to be in this general area. Um, it's important for the helmsman to also communicate as turns are started and stopped. So for example, if the captain says uh, turn left to heading 100, the helmsman would say turn left heading 100I, start executing the turn, and then report when the turn is completed. And that's important because the navigator needs to be able to plot when the new course has been uh, stabilized. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and test that. So Komi, man your station. All right. Actually. Ahead, half speed. Ahead, half speed. All right, very good. Um, now it may, may vary based upon the Naval Service, but uh, when reporting back that you're doing a command, you should always repeat the command and then say I or something along those lines. Jawohl! Jawohl, Herr Kaloin! Alright, so a note for the viewers uh, when you're doing the engine order telegraph, here, let me man it for a second. If you click on each side, it will only do that side. So you can, for example, charge with the port side and steam ahead with the right the starboard side or if you hold shift you can change both at the same time if you're switching to electric engines you just need to go to the electric engine wait for the the report back the inner dial is what the engine room says they're doing so sometimes there's a delay for example if the diesel engines are flooded they won't change to the electric engines until they're ready So you can switch to electrics and then maybe go back to commanding what speed you want and they will do that. All right, it's all yours, Comey. All right. Helm, come left, heading one, zero, zero. And you should report back. Oh, gotcha. Should I initiate when I start the turn or only when I end? Start and end. Oh. Uh, uh, helm zero zero. All right, and then a pro tip: you use A and D 
I'm, I know that you know this, but just for everyone watching, use A and D to control the rudder for left and right, and you can hold W to bring it to the center and it'll go to the neutral amidship position. Very good. So a, uh, a typical callback would be helm come left heading zero niner zero and then the helm would repeat back the command with I at the end and then report when zero nine zero established. All right, you gonna try? Helm, come left, heading zero nine or zero. Uh, helm left, zero nine or zero. Okay, uh, zero nine or zero. That's nine is between eight zero. and ten. Oh, oh crap! <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> And I'm using standard uh, radio numeric terminology that's uh, easier to understand in adverse conditions. Can I try something? Can I try something with the helmsman? Sure, go ahead. Helmsman, uh, new course, come to port, heading 365. Uh, 365, new heading. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time with the new guys. You saying it backwards? No, uh, 365 doesn't exist. It would be 005. Ah. Uh, because uh, the circle only has 360 degrees. <laughs> oh my God. I, was, I was like, we're, we're spinning in circles. Kind of He's I'm searching like, for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, command, this is navigator. Report, uh, contact, convoy eight ships dead ahead. Very good. Approximated course is 135. I recommend parallel course for now. We don't want to alert them while we do edge training. <laughs> All right, so just for everyone's information, there are two uh, numbering systems for directions. One is relative to the bow of our ship, the forward direction that we're traveling. The periscopes, the, the tack periscope that I'm on right now in the con, and the observation periscope in the control room down below both use relative bearing. So zero degrees would be directly forward the direction we're traveling. Uh, 90 degrees would be directly to the right or starboard side of our ship. 180 is behind us. 270 is to the port or left side of the ship. So um, it's important when you're communicating, especially in the heat of the moment, what numbering system you're using. So we could say bearing 270 or 90 degrees to port, which would both be the same relative direction. And uh, depending upon what information the captain or navigator has available to them, the command may come in to turn what is going on with the... Is this broken? <laughs> it was just constantly beep. Well, Someone broke the telegraph. Spamming us. What's beeping? Uh, it got stuck on, on dot or dash. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so the helmsman should be aware of what the relative direction is and may have to do a calculation. So, for example, our current heading is zero, 09 or 0, and if the command comes in to turn port 45 degrees, then they would have to calculate what the new heading should be, which in that case would be what? Uh, 45. Yes. Right now. A heading of 45. So the heading, when we say heading, we mean relative to north. And we say bearing is relative to the bow of our ship. Actually, um, as a little hint for command and the helmsman, mm -hmm. um, you want to try to keep it as easy as possible for the helmsman. Uh, so, I, I would suggest if you want to if you want to turn to port and you want to go like 45 degrees, just uh, order hard to port and 
then in the turn, when you once you're satisfied with the heading, just give the command of uh, steady as she goes. And with that, he'll just uh, a rudder midship. Get rudder midships and get back to the course on which he set the command. Yeah. Because you know, if, when you set steady as she goes, the ship's always going to turn a bit a bit further. So the helmsman lays rudder to the opposite side for a bit and gets back on the course that uh, was. Uh, laying on and when it was the commanded when you when you when, when the command was issued yeah yeah so that's a good point too so we could just use uh you know rudder commands and uh then we'll yeah, figure out what the headings would, would be i would because uh, if, if if we get sunk because uh someone made a silly mistake by calculating in the head that would that would suck yeah subsim pointed out that works good as long as the skipper can keep an eye on the compass so yeah. um yeah, you have to yeah. It, oh, it might be the case that uh, the captain may have to jump from the periscope to the TDC or some other uh, station or draw attention away. So, you know, might might want to say, you know, turn left 10 degrees or something. Yeah. Um, and then the helmsman should be able to figure that out. But, yeah, that's for larger turns, it may be easier to do what you said. Especially if. Uh, well, then to be fair, this the submarine is very friendly to this situation because there's compasses everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're, they're very, very nicely, very nicely, uh, very nicely done. Yeah. Okay. So one point about the compass here is that the inner dial turns faster because that is the smaller increment. So between 90 and 100, there's 10 degrees, and we can see the inner dial a turning fast. So if we want to come to a very specific, for example, 94, we make sure that we're above 90 at the 4 mark. Mm. And that's... Better, you could do 90, you can do 94 as zero nine five decimal 5. Yeah, you could be even more precise because there's sent 10 markings between the 4 and the 5. Very good. Yeah. Um, and that's a common pattern with a lot of the other dials on this ship. You'll see um, a couple other places as well. 